Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. In this video, I am uh, tearing down a uh, 5.0 liter engine, a 5.0 liter General Motors engine, uh, Volvo Penta system. Came out a very nice boat. It's one of the cleanest, uh, cleanest bilges and cleanest engines I've ever seen. Um, unfortunately, the block is cracked uh, due to freeze damage, so um, the block is trashed. So we're gonna. Uh, customer's gonna order a new Jasper engine and I'm gonna transfer all the uh, accessories over to the Jasper. It's called a long block. I'm gonna transfer all the accessories to the long block and put it back in the boat and get it, get it turned around a little quicker. So this video is just going over the uh, engine just to show what's going on so when I go to put things back together I'll see what's see how things are done. So there's a clamp for the uh, hoses down there coming off the power steering pump clamp to the bottom of the motor mount there. There's another clamp on the side of the exhaust there Let's see, the, the uh, oil dipstick is clamped to this uh, alternator bracket. That, uh, it's an alternator bracket with a serpentine belt tensioner on it. Usually they don't have tensioners, they just, you just tie them and, and uh, tighten them up and they're done. But this has a, a automatic tensioner, spring loaded automatic tensioner like General Motors cars and trucks. Pretty neat. So um, there's your uh, raw, raw water pump on the front of the block. This right here, to get this off, you have to take these screws out. That, pump pulls off and that gives you access to the bolts behind there. Of course you also have to take this bracket out here, these two bolts right in there to get the bracket off. Let's see, uh, going around some more. I'm trying to think, see things that are, I don't need to miss. Got a tensioner pulley it here. It's got one bolt back in there. There's a harness bracket there on the water pump uh, wires. It's got a dual fuel pump system. You got a high pressure pump here, low pressure pump there. Your fuel water separator over here. And then uh, some other canister, a uh, high pressure canister over here. And uh, so that's your high pressure out right there. This is, a high, this is your pressure return back from your fuel rail into your canister or into your uh, reservoir. And then it's, uh, the reservoir looks like it's referenced to, uh, this vacuum hose is referenced to the engine intake vacuum. All right, um, let's see, keeping on going. Let's go on this side. This uh, this uh, clamp here held this drain. I've got this drain coming down. It's draining the block. I guess you just pull it up and hook it in there and put bend it back when you're not using it. That's your block drain. Put the cap back on it. Uh, haven't seen that before. It's a new one. So this is different. The uh, ground wire. I did not remove it. I left it on the back of the block. It was almost impossible to get to, so I just unclamped it and took it out with the engine. I want to make sure I put it back in the same way. Because of the tight corners back here, I couldn't get my hand past this bracket here on the back to get down here to the uh, this stud right there. It's almost impossible to get to it. On most boats, your water inlet's over here, or the water inlet comes and attaches here. It flows through here and goes over to your engine from there. This was the backward. This was backwards. Your hot water inlet was here, flowing down here, and that pump comes down and flows into your pump on the front of the motor. Again, another clamp for the water right here on the uh, clamps on the uh, front right motor mount on this side. Got a knock sensor. Um, we're going back with the five. This is a 5.0. We're going back with the 5.7. And that's something we have to be watch out for. So this knock sensor may have to be changed to a 5.7 knock sensor. And the program uh, put in for the 5.7. I knew the program was going to have to be for 5.7, but I wasn't aware of the knock sensor at this time. But we can uh, get a 5.7 program put in there. Again, starter, nothing there, nothing uh, new there. Just checking all the. You got exhaust temperature sensors on the both sides of the exhaust. And then you come down to your flywheel cover. Um, Volvo Penta doesn't use a uh, coupler that Mercury's at. They have a coupler, but I don't like it. It's a pain in the tail to get on and off. But uh, anyway, that's one of the downsides of working on Volvo Penta. There's a good, good sides and downsides of Volvo Penta. It's got a cam sensor right here. This distributor is not the kind that, uh, huh, okay, it, it does have a, a rotatable base, but. Uh, Somebody's marked it before. You got paint on it already for this mark, but it's got a cam sensor, so the stripper doesn't uh, isn't used for timing. It's used for uh, synchronizing the cam with the computer. I think that's it. On this stud, you had ground wires. You had these two. You had uh, 
there's the other one side. So there's two, two in the boat, two large in the boat, one small in the boat, and then these two right here. So there was a total of five wires landing on this ground side here. So all the bolts and things I took off are still in the boat. All right, that's about it. I'm gonna start tearing it down and um, get it inside the shot where it's cool. I can't get on a stand. You cannot put a needle on a stand until this rear cover comes off and the coupler comes off because it's in the way to stand. And usually the fly flash will be taken off also. So that's what I'll be doing right now. I'm gonna take this uh, rear cover off and get the fly wheel off and then uh, put it on the stand. Um, by the way, you cannot set it in a truck or in a flatbed because your oil dipstick sticks down on your oil pan right there. So it's kind of hard to uh, move it in a truck without a stand. So I'm going to go and put it on a stand to transport it into a cooler shop. That's it for the uh, walk around. I'm about to tear it down and uh, I'll make note of what I do as I go. All right, I'm moving along with this tear down this Volvo Penta 5.0. Um, just got the uh, rear cover off, the coupling, and the flywheel off. And uh, Volvo Penta uses studs in the uh, crankcase flange. And uh, two of the studs came out, but the other four stuck in there. And it's not worth trying to get them out. I'm getting on these long blocks. I'm going to leave these studs in there and order new studs. So just not worth my time taking studs out. I'll just order new studs. So if you're uh, working with a Volvo Penta, you might want to go ahead and order you some uh, flywheel studs be headed to gain. All right, I'm going to move around here and uh, next we'll get the starter and uh, probably the knock sensor. I kind of work my way from the bottom to the top and uh, I'll go around this side of the block and then uh, I'll probably get the water pump out front and get all this hose. I'll take these all these hoses off at one assembly at one time. Okay, I've now removed the starter, and the only wire on the starter was the yellow or red stripe, which is your uh, starter. That's what engages the starter. Comes off that main harness right there by the Volvo Penta tag. This harness uh, comes uh, down from the your plug on the back of the motor. It works this way all the way down through here back up to the front of the motor and all the way back up through there. So this is going to be a, this harness comes off last. Let's get everything else out of the way first. So next is the water pump. Uh, we'll fix to take the water pump and all the hoses off with it. So one unit. Okay, the coolant inlet hose to the pumps come along here. Is in this bracket here, which I'm fixed to remove. It goes to the pump. Coming off the pump, this hose comes back up, goes back, back behind here, behind this, behind this hose, which is your this is a coolant hose. It's cool water for your. That's a fuel. That, that tank is a fuel cooler. This entire unit is a fuel cooler. So that's what this this hose here feeds it. And then uh, this hose here, one of these hoses comes across and goes to the exhaust right there. That's the that's where the uh, water is dumped back out to the exhaust for the fuel fuel cooler. So I'm in now. Um, trying to get the water pump off the hoses and. Uh, I just loosened this clamp right, right here. About to pull that off, pull the hose down through there and take this pump out, or part of the pump anyway. After I get that, I'll take the main radiator, uh, the upper, the uh, engine cooling hose off here. I call it radiator hose, but it's really not a radiator. I'm trying to clear out so I can get this old fuel system off here. Working towards uh, cleaning up and getting the front of the motor apart. Okay, I'm about to move this large, uh, what I call a radiator hose, but um, I'm going to show these fuel lines run underneath, underneath that hose there and run down the side of the engine right through here, up through, down through there, and run through that clamp there on the intake, and then they connect and run around to the back, and the clamp to the intake, uh, I think that's the only clamp I see, yeah, only clamp. And then they come up with another clamp right here off this post. And then they go to the fuel room. And I think I'm going to take... Um, crap, i got to find my fuel rail tool to get that off. I'm now going to take off the uh, port exhaust manifold because the engine's kind of leaning causing it to spill power steering fluid out. It's um, it's kind of a weird place to put the power steering fluid at that kind of an angle. But um, anyway... Um, for some reason the cap's not holding tight. Anyway, um, I'm gonna take take this to so rebalance and ship back to the other side. 
This hose is permanently clamped. It's got a non removable clamp. You destroy it, take it off. Uh, I may do that anyway because this hose looks like it's kind of frayed up here. But anyway, it was worked in behind, it went up behind the oil dipstick and around this bracket and then up to the, the uh, thermostat housing. Just want to show that. Uh, also, I'm going to take off these two bolts here. I'm going to keep the oil system, the oil filter system intact so that it doesn't. Uh, Spill oil everywhere. I'm gonna take it off as an assembly. And I'm actually gonna just take it loose and let it hang down while I take this exhaust off. Okay, I just removed the belt tensioner and that left all these bolts exposed so I can get this uh, combination power steering alternator bracket off the uh, start, uh, port side of the engine. First, gotta loosen this bolt right here for the uh, dipstick and then uh, take off the wires off the back of the alternator and then uh, this whole, uh, the whole bracket will come off as assembly. Well, I'm going to leave the power steering hoses attached to the pump. They ran down. They were not on the, uh, the bracket was on the oil line, so, but they kind of held the power steering up. There's a bracket back here for the power steering on the back corner here. And that's about it for the power steering. It's a quick video of the, wall, the uh, alternator connections. Orange to here, purple to there, ground black to there, and main output wire from here. Not to take them loose and then take the alternator and power steering off as a unit. Okay, the power steering and alternator was moved as a unit. These two studs need to come out because they got to be saved for the other uh, other engine. Um, obviously, I want to put the power steering hoses back on before I put the uh, oil dipstick because it was a pain in the butt to get it out from behind that dipstick. So the uh, hoses need to go first, then dipstick, then the oil dipstick. Alright, this uh pretty much this side engine is now done. Um, I gotta work on the uh, the fuel system and the all and the water pump. And uh, we're getting almost down to uh, where I can take the uh, intake off this engine and get down to the line block so we can throw it away. Okay, we got uh, fuel system off. I just disconnected the high pressure line and the uh, return line off the uh, fuel system and uh, took it off as an assembly instead of trying to take the lines loose from the, I'm gonna leave the lines connected to the uh, fuel rail there and not disconnect them. Um, we're almost at the point where I can take the harness off, um, but I've got to, uh, they've got this nice uh, electrical uh, power panel up here, power, power uh, distribution panel, it's got fuses and so forth, the main power comes in here. So your electrical fuses and distribution, so I've gotta unplug that. And then I, can, I think I can lift this harness out. One thing I did is uh, they've got the, uh, let's see, this, this this panel here comes off, here's the wires and goes down this way. So it all unwraps this direction. But this horn, this is your alarm horn, by the way, for your for your low pressure, oil pressure, your over temp, and uh, I think that's all there is on Volvo Penta. They don't have the uh, oil reservoir alarm. So. This is the alarm horn, but it goes, this horn goes this way. So it's like you have to lift it off as a halo off the top of the engine, which I can't do because I've got this chain on here. So what I'm gonna do is um, take this bolt out, take the horn off here, take it this way, peel the harness off going that way and then bring it back around. So I'm gonna have to get the harness off. If I can get the alarm horn to fit uh, down through here. This hose is your PCV hose. It can come out of the way. It's plugged in right here. It's already off. I just unplugged it, so I can pull that out of the way. So the PCV was plugged in right there, and it went down around through there. So that's out of the way. All right. Now I've got to make sure I can get the horn through here. I've got to, this is your oil pressure gauge sender. Uh, this was your alarm switch for your oil pressure. That's your uh, that sounds the alarm, and this is your actual gauge on your dash. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm about ready to pull the harness off. And then once I get the harness off, I will uh, try to see if I can get the intake off of the hanging in the air. I don't know if I can. So it's bolted to the heads. The motor mount's bolted to the heads on both sides. It looks like I might be able to pull that intake off with the uh, with it hanging up in the air. That might be, I've never done that before. I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, next is the harness and then we'll have a stripped down engine almost. Okay, I'm ripping the harness. This power wire went across the back of the motor and went over to the starter down through there. 
and it was power is powering up this main system here that's your main fuse break up there um let's see this is at the uh this is ignition coil i took that out before i even took the motor out because it was in the way of trying to get to the uh to this stud so i took it off but the uh, alarm horn is disconnected it's going to go back through here the oil sending unit is disconnected these uh injectors are disconnected let them look like a sequential because i got a tan with an orange stripe a tan with a blue stripe another tan with a blue stripe and a tan with an orange stripe so um that means it must be batch fire or, or uh so not batch fire what do they call it um bank fire fires one side then the other all right so i'm about to lift the harness out by the way you got your throttle position sensor here idle air control motor there and that's about all I see. All, by the way, the, uh, all the electrical, there's three color-coded plugs, green, gray, and black that was in the distribution center. They came out easy. All right, harness is coming off next, and uh, we're almost down to stripping this block to a long block. Yeah, I was right. So I'm unwrapping the harness from the uh, port side around the front. You see it hanging off here, going around to the starboard side. I've got all the injectors disconnected. And now I'm, the last one I'm unplugging is the map. The map sensor was underneath the distribution center. So I'd I had to remove the distribution centers up here to get to this map sensor. The map sensor is one of your primary load indicators on the engine. That and map sensor, crank position, and coolant are the only thing an engine needs or a fuel injection, ne fuel injection computer needs to run an engine. Everything else is just uh, um, auxiliaries and not necessary. It helps, but it's not absolutely necessary for the engine to run. I'm gonna get the map sensor disconnected and then the harness will be ready to come off this engine. I have to loosen these bolts down here to take this whole plate off and they'll go with the harness and the boat will be, uh, the engine will be stripped of all electronics. Okay, we're almost there. All that's left is the intake. I'm gonna try to take it off with the engine hanging on these chains. Uh, it's not, uh, the supports are not on the intake, so this might work. Um, this is, uh, when I get that off, this thing will be almost, a, it'll be a long block for all practical purposes. I've still got some, we gotta take the motor mounts off. Gotta take the uh, knock sensor out here and that drain. I gotta take this front pulley off. That's unique to the uh, Volvo Penta system. Uh, probably keep that balancer. I'm not sure if the new engine coming to balance or not. So I'll take that off in case I need it. Obviously the water pump's take it coming off. Motor mounts, oil, oil, uh, remote oil filter. Oil pressure switch gotta come out. And that will be pretty much, oh, and the oil sending unit here has gotta come out. And we're almost there. Um, got to take these two studs out for the back. Probably the new blown block won't, won't, won't have those studs. Of course, all your engine mount stuff's got to come off too. So I'll do that. Uh, oh, and the oil. May have to replace the oil pan. I'm not sure if the new oil pan, new motor will come in the oil pan with a, a bottom drain instead of a side drain. So I'm not sure about that yet. So we'll see. I just pull this uh, drain plug or drain fitting out of the side of this block down there. It was. It was screwed in right there and uh, you can see where they tried to epoxy this thing back together but um so this fitting is a 90 degree turn over to the drain and uh the drain hose in this particular case and the fitting is clogged with goop uh, there and here um, i don't think anything ever drained out of here that's a problem so they should not have done that this knock sensor should have been screwed in another port and you, all, you always want your drains to come straight out. That way you can, when you take your plug out, you can stick a probe in there and knock all the dirt out of the way and make sure it drains. If you don't see any water, so these automatic drain systems with hoses, um, let me, hold on a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the automatic drain system hoses might, might uh, seem like a good idea, but they're not because it gives you false sense of security, but that you've drained your block when you didn't because these, uh, these fittings get clogged up with crap so um, more than likely that's why this customer's engine cra or cracked because he couldn't uh he thought he drained it, but maybe he didn't so uh, i didn't even look at the other side but it may be the same way but it's poor designed by uh in this case volvo penta so if you ever drain your block make sure you got a straight fitting and uh stick a probe up in there something sharp after you pull the plug out to make sure it's draining all right this engine is now a long block Step, uh, it's got valve covers on it and the uh, front pulley and harmonic bouncer. I might have to take those off to make it a long block.